Welcome to the Putnam County League Championships. We are in Columbus Grove. I am Jennifer Beck alongside Josiah Stober. It is raining, but that is not stopping the running, is it? The 4x8 is off and going, Josiah. No, especially for these uh, longer races. I'm sure these runners are okay with a little bit of rain. Now, if it gets a downpour, it might be a little bit different story, but definitely cooled off the warm air, So, and the, but they're off. That's right. You make a good point about the rain. You know, the spectators may not really like the rain and uh, maybe even uh, some of the competitors, but the middle distance runners typically do like the rain. We are in the 4x8, and here's who we have going right now. In lane one, it's Ottoville with Haley Horseman. Lane two, Kaleida with Allie Coleman. Lane uh, 2B, Pandora Gabola with Kaylee Holke. And 3A, Columbus Grove leading off with Lily Montgomery. So only four teams um, in the league having a 4x8. It does take a little bit to get four runners who are willing or May, willing may not be the right word, <laughs> who who the coach is willing to put into the 4x8. Yeah, this is one of those races where you see the depth of a team. You know, can they put four runners together? Typically, you have one or two that enjoy this race, uh, but finding four is sometimes difficult, but, you know, especially for the Putnam County Championship here is you know, trying to get as many points as possible, and you need runners in these events. That's right. So Kaleida is currently in the lead here as these ladies make their second lap around the track, but close behind her is Kaleida. Columbus Grove, the host school, of course. And before we get too much further, we want to mention that our title sponsor is Sprunger Insurance. With locations in Pandora and Bluffton, go Rockets. <laughs> Let me say that again. Go Rockets. Sorry, Sprunger. We'll do that all over again. Sprunger Insurance is our title sponsor. With locations in Pandora and Bluffton, go Rockets. Four by eight. Still, Kaleida is your lead. They come in with the top seed time of 10.22 flat. Columbus Grove comes in with a seed time of 10.46. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in those second and third legs of this race. Yeah, so far they're setting a pretty good pace for this 4x8. As you said, Kaleida is just up by about one or two steps on the Columbus Grove runner and as they're coming down to hand off for the next leg. And as we told you earlier, that's Coleman leading off for Kaleida. According to a paper we have here, Montgomery for Columbus Grove. Kaleida is about to hand off to Addie Miller, a junior. And Columbus Grove's Sarah Camphouse is taking the baton. You know, one of the things about the rain, and especially with the distance running, because they're holding that baton in that rain, is you got to make sure that they get the good handoffs. Yeah, you wouldn't think that's something that's important. But, you know, those, those valuable seconds, if you would drop it, you know, so they want to make sure, especially on these handoff too, where it is wet, you know, making sure they get a good handoff and secure and allowing your, your teammate to get a good start on their 800. That's right. And typically in a distance race or mid-distance, even the 4x4, four four, you don't, of course, handoffs are always important, but they're open handoffs. So they're not as big of a struggle. But when you have a wet baton, you has got to, you know, got to pay attention to that. Yeah, absolutely. Second runners are on the track. Here's who we have for the other, um, the other teams. Bryn Horseman is running for Ottoville, and Paige Ferguson is running for Pandora Gaboa. And as you can see there, that is Kaleida continuing to pave the way with the lead, hoping to be the first to get some points on the board for her team in the running races. Yeah, and that's Addie Miller, as you said, doing a good job of extending that lead for Kaleida. You know, at the handoff, it was about one or two steps. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's a good 20 meter head start. So, you know, want to be able to give your, your next teammate that, that little bit of cushion to extend their lead. And she's done a really good job in this 800. The 800 is two laps around the track. Uh, really a lot of grit is needed in this race because it is not a sprint, but it's also not as much of a paced race as your mile or your two mile. So it's, a, it's kind of a controlled sprint in a sense to run this kind of race. Yeah, as we see Addie Miller just doing a good job with that stride, pumping her arms, you know, trying to maintain that distance. And you know, even the last 100 meters has extended that lead here to now about 40 meters. So doing a good job there, continuing to give her team that cushion as she's about to come down the back stretch. As we watch her make her way around, we want to let you know that our presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
Now, I may be wrong, but I think she's speeding up here at the end. That's pretty impressive yeah, in an 800, which yeah. of course you want to do, but they're just, <laughs> you put so much energy out that that's great to see that she's got that all that in the end. Yeah, as a coach, you know, you're working on those finishes, and she did a great job there sprinting that last 100 and now has extended that lead to now almost around that full corner turn lead for the Kaleida team. Erica Colley is your runner for Kaleida right now, who is still pretty commandingly in the lead. Grace Mormon for Columbus Grove has taken the baton based off what we have on our sheet. Sometimes sometimes coaches do change yep, things absolutely. after the printing has happened. Uh, this is who we're going to have coming up for Ottaville. It'll be Kristen Pullman and for Pandora Gilboa, Madison Rutchling. Interesting to see the different strides that we have going on. Um, I know you, you've got coaching experience, I have running experience, and I think we probably all have our, our ideas on what the right stride is. But, you know, as I look at the Collider runner who's got a short stride going, she still has a sizable lead over Columbus Grove. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, the Columbus Grove runner with a little bit of a longer stride doing all she can to really close that gap here. And, you know, it looks like she's done that in this first lap of her 800 as she's only closing down distance about 30 meters. All right, we're going to be interesting to see what happens in the second 400. So what you're watching at home is still Kaleida, still the lead, but now potentially in your screen, you're starting to see how close the Columbus Grove runner is making it. And this is the point where you really see how much um, how much energy, how much inertia, I don't know what exactly <laughs> word to use, but this is the point in the 800 where you see what happens with these runners. Yeah, and that Grove, you know, as you said, you can kind of see as they come come together, as the Grove looks like she's going to overtake the Collider Runners, the different strides is really striding out long, pumping those arms. As we see here, as she's able to take that lead. So what an, an amazing run here for this Columbus Grove Bulldog athlete, closing that big distance to now put her team in first. So she's striding out a little bit here on the back straightaway. She made it around. Um, you always want to pass on the straightaway if you possibly can instead of the curve. Uh, here she goes in this final 200. But, you know, the Collider Runners not giving up either. No. We'll see if anybody has that energy as we talked about in the last runner. Can they push that last 100 to give their team a, the best opportunity to finish the last 800? All right, here we go, folks. It's getting ready to be the point where you need to sprint. The Grove runner is still in the lead. The Collider runner is trying to make her way closer. Head bobbling just a little bit here as that Columbus Grove runner gets to the end, but still maintaining that lead. She is about to hand off to Brianna first. And we'll All right. see which one really sets the pace here as both of them could see each other as the Kaleida overtakes the lead now. As once again, you just talk about their strides, you can see the difference in their strides with Kaleida runner starting off really fast, extending that, those long steps. But we'll see as, as we get around after this first lap, who's got the most at the end. According to our schedule, our list here, it's Lauren Lodick who is your anchor and she made no waste, she wasted no, no time to take off. Now, you know, if, if any of you at home know much about running, you know that you don't really want to pass on the curve. But she didn't care. She no. was ready to go. <laughs> she had her plan. She knew what she planned to do, and she executed right away. Well, and you know there's different runners out there. Some like to sit back and, and go with the pace of the run. Others don't want anybody in front of them. They just want to be able to run. And you can see that early as she just got out yeah, on that first, first corner awesome. and now has extended that lead back for this Kaleida team. I really like to see how straight up she is running. I like to see um, she's lifting her knees pretty well, but she's also getting a good uh, distance in each one of her steps. Uh, strong first place lead now as she makes her way into the last lap for this relay. And your winner of the boys' high jump with the lead from six feet from Columbus Grove, Jared Holland. As we're watching her make her way around here, we want to remind you that you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.com. 
WOSN.TV. That's the WOSN channel stream 24-7. Perhaps you have grandparents who live elsewhere. You have graduated kids who live elsewhere, but they all want to pay attention to their younger siblings or their grandchildren. Well, this is a great opportunity. The WOSN channel stream. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Kaleida's Lauren Lodick, just a little bit over 100 left to go. Looks like she has slowed down a tad, but created a large enough of a lead that that is probably going to work out okay for her. Yeah, I mean, hear one of her coaches say, take it easy, knowing that her lead in the last 50 to 100 meters is enough for her to kind of just coast till the end. And it looks like that's what she's doing, but we're gonna win it for the Kaleida team. And there you go. That is the first running race of the PCL Championships, Event 11, the girls' 4 by 800 meter relay. And your champion team is Kaleida. Moving on to event number 12, it's the boys' 4 by 800 meter relay, and we have five teams in this race. In lane one, it's Ottoville, two Columbus Grove, three, or two B Lipsick, three A Pandora Gilboa, and three B Kaleida. As the guys are off and running. As we look at the best seat time going on with the 8.35, which Columbus Grove is really known for a lot of these middle distance runners. They've Absolutely. always had some really good teams in the past. And we'll see here early if you know their first leg gets them off to a really good start. And uh, we've seen that over the years. It's just them you know, continuing to produce these really good middle distance runners. And it looks like they're in first right now. That's right. That's Logan Mershman, according to our information here. And like you said, yeah, they just produce. They 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 reproduce the yeah. good middle distance <laughs> runners as well. You know, sometimes you see a team and they're like, oh, they have such a great relay, but they're all seniors. Mm -hmm. Columbus Grove is consistently a school that clearly has a great training program because they just keep bringing them out year yeah. after year. Yeah, some of those teams that have went down the state in the past. It's just it's some amazing runners, and you really can't tell the difference between any of their legs. They just continue <laughs> to produce and, and run really good times here. And right now, as you see, getting out to an early lead, so important for this Grove team to start off well, and they've done that so far. Logan Mershman, your leadoff for Columbus Grove. Battling out for second place right now are some of the other runners. We've got Wyatt German from Ottoville, David Garcia from Lipset, Ben Brandon from Pandora Gilboa, and Noah Recker from Kaleida. You can't see it on your screen right now, but the, uh, the Ottoville runner is attempting to go from fourth to second place, which he is being, looks like he's gonna be successful in doing that. So he's gonna hand off in second, but Columbus Grove is clearly going to hand off in first. So Grove is in first, Ottoville is in second, Pandora Goboa is in third, and Kaleida is in fourth. Yeah, a good run there by the leadoff runner for Columbus Grove to give them a good lead to start here. And as you said, some changing of positions there behind the Columbus Grove team as some runners deciding to get out early and passing on those corners. Evan Pence from Grove still has his team in first place, but in second place is no longer Ottoville. It's Pandora Goboa that has moved into that second place spot. You know, it's interesting to me watching the Columbus Grove runner because when you watch sprinters and you watch distance runners, there's a different stride. But he's really got a kick going right now, which is really more of a sprinter style run. Yeah, sometimes you wonder if some of these guys are sprinters and um, but he's doing a good job, like you said, with that stride and having to wipe his glasses there <laughs> as we saw his coming to ground. And I imagine that might be a little bit of difficulty for him, but he's doing a good job maintaining that lead here, about 30 to 40 meters. Keeping that lead hasn't allowed the Pandora Gilboa runner to, to gain any distance on him. We'll see on this last 800, or I'm sorry, 400, if he continues to, to maintain that lead or can gain some distance for his team. 
So you mentioned wiping off the glasses. We you know, you at home are enjoying a dry area when you watch this, but we have been off and on with rain ever since about four o'clock, and we are currently at about 5.15 right now. So an hour and 15 minutes and off and on rain. I thought it was done. Yeah. And then really right before this race started, it came right back again. Well, it keeps playing tricks on us with, you know, get the umbrella out and put it away, get it out. So, you know, but you got the, the faithfuls out here in the in the rain here and it looks like it, most people are prepared with their umbrellas and ready to see this great event that Columbus Grove puts on. That's right and you know that is what spring sports is about. I think anybody who's been involved long enough knows part of your sporting uh, attire and what you need to keep in your vehicle is all of the rain stuff because that happens at track meets. Well, and I know we mentioned it already. This is really nice running weather for these Absolutely. middle distance, even long distance runners. You know, if it maintains, you know, 80 degree weather for most of the day, but this kind of has cooled off the night a little bit. So I'm sure these runners are enjoying the, the lack of heat. That's right. And the, the overcast uh, weather also is, is helpful instead of the hot sun on them. Well, we love the hot sun. I love being in the sun, but you know, when you're running, there is there is a benefit to having a little bit of overcast. Well, Columbus Grove continuing to maintain a very strong lead. Pandora Gilboa is in second place right now, out of your screen, of course, and Ottoville is in third. So one of the things about the 4x8, and we, uh, you don't always see a lot of 4x8s on our broadcast because sometimes they happen so much before the rest of the, uh, the meet that our crews aren't even here yet because they happen several hours earlier than them. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of disparity in distance. So what you're watching at home is pretty much one runner because of the way it, the, the way it spreads out here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there is a big distance even between first and second right now, you know, but then second and third and fourth and, you know, with the team, you know, a team just now handing off for that third leg here. But, you know, we'll see, you know, especially that talk about that last 400 who, you know, all that training you've done all that mm -hmm. time in the work and the, you know, workout room, the, the weight room, doing all the things that you need to, you know, to really prepare your body, especially, you know, for the ultimate goal is to hopefully get down to state this year. Right. You know, so these are some great, you know, events prior to and preparing yourself for the that long run. So for let's let's just say, and I'm sure Columbus Grove is hoping that their four by eight makes it to state. It's a completely different setup. There is no situation where they're running by themselves because it's so close. So they're really on their own preparing for that, having to on their self motivation to be able to keep going as they're virtually racing by themselves right now. Yeah, that's a great point. They're almost racing themselves, you know, see how much they can improve. And, you know, as they give it to the final leg here, you know, the runner getting out very quickly, you know, seeing that stride, especially when they start out, you know, <laughs> it sometimes changes as they get to the end of the race, but, you know, really striding it out, you know, battling to see if they can, you know, just PR or beat their right. best times this year to just to continue to improve. And of course, the neat thing in track is you're also working on your own split. So every single race is a self-directed, self, yeah, self-motivated opportunity to improve. Whether you win the race or not, that's one of the things I love about these individualized sports. When they improve their times, they're, they got their own victory. Absolutely. Well, you know, the coaches are looking at their times also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't, even though they know they may win this race, you know, they're still looking to see if they're competing, they're challenging themselves to get get even better. And you know the coaches afterwards are, are checking every single time to see if they can continue to find ways to improve. That's right. One more lap to go for Bryce Boniface, the leader in this race, the anchor for Columbus Grove. Pandora is in second with Jack Buell, the anchor there. And your third place runner at the moment, third place team is Ottoville, anchoring with Matthew Hortzman. Okay, I don't know if I should say it, but I think the rain has let up again. I don't know if I you should jinx it. <laughs> well, let's see. Josiah and I are actually sitting under a big umbrella, but our cameraman, Jacob, is out, is completely standing out in it, and he says it is still raining. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Columbus Grove coming down that final 100 meters. I'd love to see his split because it really doesn't seem like he has slowed down no. since he got the baton. 
like I said, trying to improve his time and his split, especially as the anchor. Hopefully it's your best, you know, fastest runner. But you see him still trying to sprint all the way till the end and a great race by him. That's right, Columbus Grove, they're your winner in the boys four by 800 meter relay. And then 13, the girls' 100-meter hurdles. You are watching the Putnam County League Track Championships, sponsored by Sprunger Insurance. Tonight's title sponsor is Sprunger Insurance, with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! This is heat two of two in the girls' 100-meter hurdles. In lane one, it's Mackenzie Shock of Continental. Lane two, Kendall Palti of Columbus Grove. Lane three, Bree Clausen of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Morgan Apple of Lipsick. Lane five, Jessa Bergai of Ottoville. And lane six, Carly Heitmeyer of Kaleida. And as we look at some of the seed times here coming in, you know, have about three or four of these runners that should be very close at the end, coming with very similar seed times as we look early, it looks like Morgan Apple is out early. And Bree Clausen's right there to her left. Going to come down to the end. Lane four, Morgan Apple of Lipsick. Event 14, the boys 110 meter hurdles. We want to remind you that our presenting sponsor of this and all of the races is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. In this heat two of two in the boys hurdles, we have in lane two, Jonathan Etter of Continental. Lane three, Garrett Trentman of Ottoville. Lane four, Jace Brecht of Leipzig. Lane five, Leighton Blankmeyer of Columbus Grove and lane six, Braylon Barrientes of Columbus Grove. So we only have actually four runners here. We are missing Jace Brecht of Lipsick. Check out Garrett Trentman of Ottoville. Yeah, doing a great job attacking those hurdles. Got off to a fast start, and he will win it. First place goes to Trentman of Ottoville. Second place, Blankmeyer of Columbus Grove. We're moving now to event 15, the girls' 100-meter dash. This is heat two of three. In lane two, Peyton Diller of Pandora Gilboa. Lane three, Bryn Hawker of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Avery Unverfirth of Kaleida. And lane five, Destiny Peer of Continental. Very close seed times between three and four. But take a look. Oh, I was going to say take a look at lane two, yeah. but Unverfer from Kaleida. Yeah, doing a great job there, extending that lead there at the end. So great run by her. Heat three in the girls' 100 meter dash. Lane one, Gabby Metzger of Ottoville. Lane two, Meredith Bockrath of Kaleida. Lane three, Allison Thompson of Columbus Grove. Lane four, fresh off of her win in the 100 meter hurdles, Morgan Apple of Lipsick. Lane five, Lexi Reynolds of Lipsick. And lane six, Lyra Perkins of Pandora Gaboa. Yeah, it looks like Allison Thompson comes in with the best seed time is out early, about two steps on the competition. It looks like she will win for Columbus Grove. Event number 16, the boys 100 meter dash. In lane one, Lucas Clear of Miller City. This is heat two of three, by the way. Lane two, Braden Ferguson of Pandora Gaboa. Lane three, Logan Kester of Ottoville. Lane four, Peyton Wilson of Continental. Lane five, Mateo Gutierrez of Lipsick. And lane six, Andrew Miller of Pandora Gaboa. Really kind of an even field here. 12 flat is the fastest seed time in this heat. 12-4-4 is the slowest seed time in this heat. Yeah, it should be a good battle, especially in the middle of the track here with Logan Kester and Peyton Wilson all really close in their seed time. So we'll see who comes out on top. But it looks like Peyton Wilson did a good job getting out early. He's out front. Just over the Pandora Gilboa. It looks like he will win this heat. Heat three of three in this same race, the boys' 100-meter dash. Lane one, Ryan Bierhoff of Kaleida. Lane two, Marquise Williams of Lipsick. Lane three, Keegan Bame, Columbus Grove. Lane four, Trevon Baxter, Trevin Baxter of Columbus Grove. Lane five, Michael Turnwald of Ottoville. And lane six, Grant Fortman of Kaleida. Uh, 
And it looks like we'll be without lane four, Trevin Baxter from Columbus Grove. As Keegan Bang gets out quickly for Columbus Grove with about a two-step lead here. He's, we'll finish strong and we'll win it. Well, it's time to move now to our sprint relays. This is the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. And one reminder for you again, the title sponsor of our PCL right. Track Championship is Sprunger Insurance. With locations in Pandora and Bluffton, they say, go Rockets. Well, as they get ready to go, it's the girls' 4 by mark. 200 meter relay in lane one. It's Lipsick, lane two, Pandora Gilboa, lane three, Columbus Grove, lane four, Kaleida, lane five, Ottoville, and lane six, Fort Jennings. And they are off and running, and what you at home couldn't hear was the uh, the little fan to our <laughs> right who was practicing his ability to be the starter. Yes. Probably about a six or seven year old in the corner, maybe five, maybe even younger, four or five. He started that race yeah. off a little bit sooner than the rest. I think he did a good rest. job, though. I agree. I agree. <laughs> nice and loud. Speaking of a good job, the ladies are off and going, getting ready for that first handoff. And it looked to me like that might be Kaleida that had that yeah, first handle. Yeah, Kaleida was handle. first handle. Columbus Grove struggled a little bit. Had to have a runner reach back before grabbing the baton. So allowed Kaleida to get out to an early lead. But it looks like Columbus Grove is making up that distance here. Columbus Grove comes in your favorite based off of seed time at a 149 flat. Kaleida with a 152.5. And it was Columbus Grove with that handoff. They have gained the lead now as nice. they go around this corner. Yeah, nice job by Devaney Pingle to uh, catch up after that, after that handoff issue and be able to get, get herself back up and get her team up there. And it looks like it's going to be a battle between Kaleida and Columbus Grove as the Kaleida runner on the outside is trying to gain that little bit of distance. We'll see this last handoff, which is so important. Who gets it first? And it looks like Kaleida was able to get it first. Avery Unverhurth is the anchor for Kaleida. Jade Raider, the, the anchor for Columbus Grove. And just like you said, Josiah, it is going to be a battle to the end with Raider taking that slight lead around that curve. Yeah, Raider doing a good job now. Looks like she's extending it. Able to push about five or six lengths. And... Columbus Grove will win the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. Grove is first, Kaleida is second, and Pandora Gilboa will finish in third. Event number 18, the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay in lane one, Continental. Lane two, Ottoville. Lane three, Columbus Grove. Lane four, Lipsick. Lane five, Kaleida. Nice. And in lane six, Fort Jennings. Josiah Columbus Grove is leading off with Keegan Baim. And we just saw him win the 100 not long ago. Absolutely. You know, starting off with a lot of speed, as we saw in the 100-meter dash. And you know, with this Grove team, want to get out early, coming in with the best seed time. So we'll see it early, as you said, with Keegan Bame. Handing off to Trenton Barraza. So it is 1-2. In fact, as we've talked before, Columbus Grove consistently with strong relay teams. And Trenton Barraza, another great, great runner. Set. So the other leadoff runners, we mentioned Keegan Bain in three. In Continental leading off with Colin Hammond in one, Audeville Alex Lease in two. Over in four, it's Lipstick's Quinn Westhoven, Kaleidas Jackson Schrader in five, and Fort Jennings with Ian Stexualdy in six. As we saw Keegan Bain first to give the handoff, giving his team the the early lead as we see him it's kind of hard from our vantage area to see who's in first but it looks like Grove even though Kaleida mm -hmm. is out in front of them now but with that tiered yeah and handoff. I think they actually changed their lineup because I don't believe that that was Barraza no. I think Barraza's there actually with yep. the with the with it right now yep I agree with you I believe this is Trent Barraza as the third leg and he's out in front As you said, Columbus Grove coming in with a time, one minute, 33 seconds, the best seed time. And 
they are able look like Trent got there a little bit earlier. I was going to say that handoff was a little bit close, but Grant Eversole is who we have listed as the anchor, and it didn't slow him down much. But take a look at uh, what's going on over there in two with Otto Volger and Trentman. He is really trying to chase him down. Yeah, the poor handoff allowed Ottaville to catch back up a little bit, but it will be Columbus Grove winning the boys' 4x2 100-meter relay. Our presenting sponsor of the PCL Track Championships is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delta, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Event 19 moves us into the distance races, and this is the girls' 1,600-meter run. In lane 1A, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove. 1B, Addie Miller of Kaleida. 1C, Reese Hortzman of Ottoville. 2A, Andrea Powell of Miller City. Lane 2B, Andrea Burgai of Kaleida. And 2C, Morgan Horston of Ottoville. Hurston, rather. Lane 3A, Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove. Larry B, Savannah Knuven of Pandora Gilboa. And 3C, Avery Trexler of Pandora Gilboa. And it is Andrea Fowl with the best seed time coming in at 5 minutes, 13 seconds. As we see, it looks like she is out in front. That's right. She has taken off right from the beginning, setting her own pace with the Kaleida runner, Andrea Burgai, behind her. It looks like she's one that likes to keep her own pace, doesn't want to be in the crowd. And, you know, we see a variety of things when we when you, when you have the, the 1600 because some runners are willing to just stay in that pack Absolutely. for a while yep. and then branch out when, when they're ready to go. But, yeah, right away from the beginning, she had her pace and she knew what she wanted to do. Fifth, Lydia Rones, Kaleida, fourth, Nicole Nesby. So right now we've got Miller City first, Kaleida second. Kaleida was third, but just now got passed, I believe, by a Columbus Grove runner. But what you're seeing right now is the leader, Andrea Powell of Miller City. Do you have some results there that uh, we just got handed? Yeah, thank you for to Columbus Grove for getting us some results here that we can read during the 1600 meter run as we look at the girls' high jump. In fifth place was Madison. Rutschilling from Pandora Gilboa, along with Lydia Shoemaker, both tied for fifth place. Uh, in fourth place, Kendall Palti from Columbus Grove. In third place, Skylar Fauzi from Lipsick. In second place, Adeline Hubert from Kaleida, and her teammate, Malia Romez, with a high jump of four feet, 10 inches. So 18 big points for the Kaleida girls team in the high jump. Now, as we look at the boys' high jump, in fifth place was also another tie, was Chase Meyer and Dylan Mertz. Dylan Mertz from Columbus Grove and Chase Meyer from Pandora Gilboa. In fourth place, Marquise Williams from Lipsick. In third place, Adam Brinkman from Ottaville. In second place, Jace Brecht from Lipsick. And our winner, Jared Holland from Columbus Grove with a jump of six feet to six win the boys' high feet. jump. So he could have jumped over me and then some. I'm 5'9". Yes. <laughs> Actually, both of them. Second place, I think, was 5'10". So great, great jumps there by Impressive, guys. those young men. As you're reading that, I'm noticing that our leader is just extending her lead. We've got Miller City and then Kaleida, Kaleida, Columbus Grove and Columbus Grove. But the Miller City runner, Andrea, just continues to set her own pace. Well, just so important, too, is we see two collider runners there in second and third. If they can finish it, those are big points, especially towards the Putnam County League Championship. You know, if you can get two athletes to score, it really helps your team score, you know, improving that chance to move up the leaderboard. That's right. Look at a couple more results here for the boys' shot put. In fifth place, Aiden Killian from Kaleida. In fourth place, Carson Meyer from, from Pandora Gilboa. In third place, Brady Thompson from Continental. In second place, Dylan Siefker from Kaleida. 
And our winner for the boys' shot put was Kylan Mays from Columbus Grove with a throw of 44 feet 8 inches. Thanks. Let's see. I wonder how many more results we can get <laughs> in the final 300 because that's what Andrea from Miller City has left in this 1600. Yeah, it really hasn't race. slowed down at all. Absolutely. Her stride continues to be very strong. Yeah, so let's look at our girls' discus throw results here in fifth place. Malia Romez from Kaleida. In fourth place, Nicole Nesby from Columbus Grove. In third place, Devin Draper from Pandora Gilboa. In second place, Lauren Martz from Columbus Grove. And our winner, Maya Burgai from Kaleida with a throw of 108 feet 5 inches to win the girls' discus throw. Way to go for her, 108.5. And take a look at Andrea from Miller City as she makes her way around. She is, Josiah, it looks to me like she, she saved some energy here. She is catching up. She is going to, uh, she's going to lap one of the competitors and her eyes are on that finish line. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to imagine she sped up because she was flying the whole entire time. So great win for her. That's right. Miller City gets first place. We'll stick around and we'll stick watch these last two Kaleida girls make their way in too. Like you said before, second and third place going to go to Kaleida. Nice points for Kaleida as they won the four by eight. You know, we're, of course, they're, they're eyeing those points for that championship. Event 20, the boys 1600 meter run, 14 runners. Lane one, A, B, and C, Levi Bryan of Columbus Grove, Calvin Miller of Miller City, and Jack Buell of pa Pandora Gaboa. And in lane one, Beck Altenwang of Fort Jennings. Two, A, B, C, D, and E. The runners are Luke Ellibrock of Columbus Grove, Colin Heitmeyer of Kaleida, Adam Buell of Pandora Gaboa, Connor Guerva of Lipsick, and Alex Schinninger of Kaleida. Three, A, B, C, D, and E, Wyatt German of Ottoville, Mason German of Fort Jennings, Matthew Hortzman of Ottoville, Carson Schrader of Lipsick, and Cameron Burgai of Continental. And as we look at the best seed time is Luke Ellerbrock, who is our leader currently with a time of 4 minutes 30 seconds. And as we look at the PCL record with a time of 4 minutes 21 seconds was Brendan Siefker. Look right on his heels. You got Ellerbrock leading, but Heitmeyer right there behind him from Kaleida. Got some pockets here now. We got our leader and the second place. Well, now there's some distance going on. And we're, for our third place, there could be some challengers there. Three runners almost running in concert with one another. And then we got four runners who are back there in that next pocket who will be vying for the spots back there. But yeah, take a look at Luke Ellerbrock, the senior from Columbus Grove, a very decorated uh, distance runner, is distancing himself from this crowd. Yeah, as he finished that first 400, it was very close between him and Heitmeyer. But as we've seen here in this last 200 meters, he's really extended his lead. And you just see it with that stride, that long stride. You know, not really a, a, a tall athlete, but you can see he really does a good job of striding out, pumping those arms. You know, really set a really fast pace here. You know, be nice if we could see a clock to kind of see where he's at. But doing a good job here of just continuing to extend this lead certainly been fun to watch Luke Ellerbrock all these past years as he's run because he's always been exactly what you said, Josiah, very solid, very focused, um, almost emotionless when he's running. I'm sure that's not the case. There's probably plenty of things going on in his head, but he's, he knows what he needs to do, and he sets that out and executes it. One of his teammates has moved into second place here now with the, uh, but is being challenged. You probably cannot see him at the moment because all eyes are on your leader, Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove. Got some results there? Yeah, let's look at the boys' long jump. In fifth place, Michael Turnwald from Ottaville. In fourth place, Landon Moore from Pandora Gilboa. In third place, Boat Thompson from Columbus Grove. In second place, Cole Knipkin from Ottaville. And in first place, Grant Eversall from Columbus Grove with a jump of 19 feet 4 inches. So great jump there by him and, and really first and third. So some big points for Columbus Grove in that event. As so we look at the girls' long jump, in fifth place was Adeline Huber from Kaleida. In fourth place, Jessa Burgai from Ottaville. In third place, Lauren Laudick from Kaleida. In second place, Lauren Ockmoody from Columbus Grove. And our winner 
For the girls' long jump is Reagan Marshall from Continental with a jump of 16 feet, 7 inches. I want to mention that when that long jump was going on, it had been raining. So not only was the the the, uh, the running space for them wet, but the sand was also wet at that point when they were doing those jumps. Yeah, we'll do one more result here. Is girls' 4 by 800 meter relay. In fourth place was Audeville. In third place was Pandora Gilboa. In second place was Columbus Grove. And the winners is Kaleida with a time of 10 minutes, 38 seconds. And that was the team of Ali Kuhlman, Addie Miller, Erica Colley, and Lauren Laudick. So congratulations to Kaleida. I want to mention that I just love seeing what Luke Ellerbrock is doing right now. He is, he is significantly ahead of the crowd, but he is pushing so hard as he pushes his way into the end. You can just see it in his stride, in his arms, and everything. He is pushing hard to finish here in this race. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see his time there as we got a battle for second and third Yeah, let's take a look up. here with the camera and see what's going on here. Columbus Grove was in second, but Miller City runner just made his way. That's Calvin Miller. He's going to finish in second. Columbus Grove is going to be in third. And then Kaleida will be your fourth place winner. Moving back into the sprint relays, it's a girls 4 by 100 meter relay. You're watching the PCL Track Championships. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Josiah Stober, and this meet is sponsored by Sprunger Insurance. With locations in Pandora and Bluffton, go Rockets. Girls 4 by 100 meter relay, one heat, lane one, Ottoville, lane two, Pandora Gilboa, lane three, Columbus Grove, lane four, Kaleida, lane five, Lipsick, and lane six, Fort Jennings. One time around the track, four runners. And as we've seen all night, it should be a battle between Columbus Grove and Kaleida with very similar seed times. Columbus Grove coming in with a little bit faster time, but it could all depend on handoffs. Yeah. And we've seen tonight some teams struggling to get that handoff and get it right. And Kaleida got that handoff, that first one. So we'll see what's going on here with the second one. Once again, Kaleida, oh, Columbus Grove barely got that handoff in. Uh, it's hard to tell on that corner who's in lead, but could come down to who has the best handoff here. Both teams about at the same time, but it looks like Columbus Grove has the slight lead here. That's right. Amaya Huff had a great third leg despite that handoff. Got it to Jade Raider, who brings it home for her team. First place, Columbus Grove. Second place, Kaleida. Boys, four by 100 meter relay. There are two heats and we will bring you both of them. In heat one, Fort Jennings in lane two, Continental in lane three, and Lipsick in lane four. Two of the three come in with the exact same seat time, 48 seconds. Looks like Fort Jennings and Lipsick both at the handoff about the same time. It looks like Lipsick has jumped out to an early lead. It's kind of hard to tell with that staggered release, but it is Lipsick That's first right. to get the baton to the next runner here. Micah Ruiz is who we have listed as that Lipsick third runner. Matea Gutierrez, Brody Lammers, Micah Ruiz, and Carter Benton, the anchor. It is Lipsick oh, out in front. Look at his head down, moving down. But man, take a look at Continental. Peyton Wilson got it done for his team in Heat 1. Heat 2 of 2 in the boys' 4 by one relay. Lane 2, Pandora Gilboa. Lane 3, Columbus Grove. Lane 4, Ottoville. And Lane 5, Kaleida. Interesting disparity between Columbus Grove and Ottoville. 44.5 is the incoming seed time for Grove, 44.6 for Ottoville. And we see some familiar names there. And for Columbus Grove, Keegan Bame, once again, the leadoff runner for Columbus Grove. Alex Lease is leading off for Ottoville. It's hard to tell with the stagger, but it looks like it might be, oh, you no, know, I was going to guess Lease, but it's not. Grove has that has the advantage at the moment. Grant Eversole getting ready to hand off to Barraza. Well, we saw in that four by two, Columbus Grove struggling a little bit with their timing, but much better in the four by one. Both handoffs have went really well as they're coming around the corner with the lead here. And another good handoff. So 
Three good handoffs for Columbus Grove would push them in the lead, and it's going to be Trentman once again trying to make up that time on Columbus Grove. But it's going to be Columbus Grove with the win in the 4 by 100 meter relay. Event 23, the girls' 400-meter dash. It says heat three of three in lane one, Nicole Siebenek of Kaleida. Lane two, Jade Grader of Columbus Grove. Lane three, Lauren Laudick of Kaleida. Lane four, Lauren Ockmody of Columbus Grove. Lane five, Madison Kinsinger of Pandora Gilboa. And lane six, Tia Paniguia of Lipsick. Oh, two guns. That means we had a false start. Potentially is what we had happen. Kind of hear the crowd go, ooh. It looks like it'll be the Pandora Gilboa athlete, Madison Kinzinger. Oh, unfortunate for her. Those things do happen, unfortunately. And this is a situation where it's a one and done. So false start and um, we move down then to she was in lane five, I believe. As a reminder, our runners will stay in the lane for the entire race all the way around the track. Well, and I always say it's better they do it now instead of doing it where at district. Exactly. <laughs> you know, when it may take away a chance for them to advance, so it's unfortunate, but. Opportunity to learn from it and hopefully we'll be better prepared for district. So we've got five runners in this heat. Nicole Sibanek of Kaleida in one, Jade Raider of Grove in two, Lauren Lodek of Kaleida in three, Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove in four, and Tia Panigua of Lipsick in six. And we're looking at Lauren Ockmoody in lane four and Lauren Lodek of Kaleida in three. And it looks like Lodick has taken the lead. Yeah, Lauren Lodick comes in with the best seed time of one minute, one second, as she's extended this lead here. And we see that long stride as she's coming to the last 100. She's still looking really strong to yeah, finish this how, 400. Look at how she's using her arms to project herself forward. It's like she's using each uh, arm push to push herself forward like she's pulling herself. Yeah, well, great race there by Lauren Lodick from Kaleida. She will win. Jade Raider of Columbus Grove second and Ock Moody also of Columbus Grove in third. Heat three of the boys 400 meter dash brings us in lane one, Marquise Williams of Lipsick. Lane two, Colin Davis of Continental. Lane three, Trenton Barraza of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Grant Clements of Continental. Lane five, Jared Holland of Columbus Grove. And lane six, Chase Meyer of Pandora Gilboa. Trenton Barraza coming in with the top time of 51.60. You know, we just saw a record drop in the girls, uh, Lauren Lodick ran a 59.78 to defeat a record from 2009. In this race, a 49.7 is the record for the guys. Barraza would have to drop about two seconds to get there. And he's done a really good job of extending that lead here. Really strong runner. We see him on the football field and also the basketball court. So all around good athlete for Columbus Grove. And you see him, he's continued to push a lot of athletes you see here tonight trying to break some of those records as he will win the boys' 400-meter dash. Barraza, first place, Continental in second. The Putnam County League Track Championships are brought to you by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! This is event 25, the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Heat two of two. In lane one, Mallory Kerner of Kaleida. Lane two, Morgan Apple of Lipsick. Lane three, Kendall Palte of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Jessa Bergai of Ottoville. Lane five, Lauren Halker of Columbus Grove. And lane six, Mackenzie Schock of Continental. And Kendall Palte comes in with the best seed time for Columbus Grove with a 48.46. 
And she has been the first to get over that hurdle, but Apple of Lipstick looked pretty close to her. Maybe even has taken the lead now. Yeah, and I always say this is one of the toughest race is for, you know, for anybody. Oh, this 300 meter hurdles. Absolutely agree with you, Josiah. You get to that last hurdle and you almost look like you're jumping over a, a cliff there, but these girls are really getting after us. Audeville, the runner, Jessa Burgai, Jessa is Burgay, battling. She's got experience at stake in this, in this event. Kendall Pulte of Columbus Grove. Looks like she's gonna get the PCL championship though. She is your winner. Our next event is the boys 300 meter hurdles. Our presenting sponsor of the PCL track championships is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's in Lima, Wapak Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. In lane one, it's Joseph Lease of Ottoville. Lane two, Brock Schaefer of Columbus Grove. Three, Garrett Trentman of Ottoville. Four, Leighton Blankmeyer of Columbus Grove. Five, Carter Benton of Lipsick. And six, Ezra Webkin of Fort Jennings. Oh, Ger Trentman was over that <laughs> first hurdle in a hurry. <laughs> well, Garrett Trentman, the winner of the boys' 100-meter hurdles. I'm sorry, 110-meter hurdles. And we see it here early. He just exploded out of the blocks there. And... He hasn't slowed down since. Oh, my. So his seed time is a 40.3, and the meet record is a 39.5 set back in 2008. We don't have the ability to see the, the times here because we don't have an electronic clock, but I think he might be going for this. Look at, look at the look on his face. Wow, what a race there by Garrett Trentman. Just exploded out of the blocks and didn't slow down the entire time. We see why that seed time is so good. Great race by him, and congratulations on the win. Event 27 is the girls' 800-meter run. We have 11 runners. In lane one, it's Addie Miller of Kaleida, Isabel Furley of Ottoville, and Sophia Schaefer of Fort Jennings. In lane two, it's Allie Coolman of Kaleida, Grace Mormon of Columbus Grove, Haley Hortzman of Ottoville, and Angelina Gilbert of Fort Jennings. And in three, Devaney Pingle of Columbus Grove, Savannah Canuvan of Pandora Gilboa, Madison Rutschling of Pandora Gilboa, and Josie Otto of Miller City. Results of the boys, yeah, we look at some of the best seed times coming in is Allie Coleman in Kali from Kaleida, who looks like she's up front there. We also got some runners. Her teammate, Addie Miller, comes into the seed time at 2 minutes and 31 seconds. And Devaney Pingle from Columbus Grove at 2.31. So some really good times here. We'll see who can battle for this 800. So he's a little bit difficult to uh, navigate since they hadn't had a chance to make their way over to lane one. But now as we've got that, as you said, we've got Collider Runner first place and Columbus Grove second. Really looks like the Grove Runner is just uh, nipping on her heels, just kind of going to use her to help pull herself along. Now, we've got Columbus, Clyda, Columbus Grove, Clyda, Columbus Grove. And that makes me think about where we are right now with the scoring with this meet because these two teams are pretty close to each other with points right now. And Josiah's looking for the uh, results that we have. We've been given a lot of results. We haven't had a chance to, uh, to share all of them. Yeah, an updated one, I guess, after the girls' 400-meter score, it was Columbus Grove with 112.5 points and Kaleida with 109 points. So we'll try to keep you updated if we get scores here. But as you said, it's going to be a battle here between Kaleida and Columbus Grove. So that's what we have right now. Kaleida first, Columbus Grove second, and Kaleida third. But take a look at that third-place Kaleida runner. I, I almost felt like she was ready to make a move. Didn't do it, but... but just kind of changed her stride for a moment. Yeah, it looks like Columbus Grove runner may be trying to come up, but we see all three runners now with a little bit of extra kick at the end here. And it looks like it will go Kaleida one, Columbus Grove two, Kaleida three, Columbus Grove four. Event number 28, the boys 800 meter run, 12 contestants, lanes one through A through D, Connor Guerva of Lipstick, Adam Buell of Pandora Gilboa, Braylon Best of Columbus Grove, Dylan Schaefer of Fort Jennings. In lane two, Landon Moore of Pandora Gilboa, Colin Heitmeyer of Kaleida, Matthew Hortzman of Ottoville, and Noah Recker of Kaleida. And three, Bryce Boniface of Columbus Grove, Wyatt German of Ottoville, Carson Schrader of Lipstick, and Elijah Myler of Continental.
Coming in with the best seed time is Landon Moore from Pandora Gilboa, followed by Bryce Boniface from Columbus Grove. So both with very close seed times. And don't count out Kaleida either, because as they make their way over, what we're seeing right now is Columbus Grove, Kaleida, and Columbus Grove. This is two laps around the track. Guys are halfway done. Still relatively, I mean, uh, there's a little bit of, we, our, our leader is, is making some his own space, but take a look at the grouping there. We still have grouping way back. Fourth place could be about anybody's. Yeah, one, two, and three are all within about 10 meters apart, and then you got a little bit of space there between the next pack of five runners, but now we're starting to see some separation here. Looks like though, looks like Columbus Grove, Kaleida, Columbus Grove, Kaleida. It sounds like uh, the same thing we've been talking about in all the things. Oh, Kaleida's fourth, runner who was in fourth place is ready to make his move back up there. He has moved all the way up into second place. This is always the interesting part, the final 200, because you see what these guys have left in this race. And oh, the Kaleida runner just had a quick look back. Maybe he needed to make sure that he could get into that lane. But we're looking at Columbus Grove first, oh, Kaleida here. second, Pandora Gilboa moving into third. Can he make second? I think he's going to get it. Wow. What a run there. It looks what like his teammate run. ran all the way up to fourth place. So a little bit of a burst there in the last 200 meters. Like you said, who's got something left? And look like Landon Moore comes in second place, but a great burst there at the end. Our next event is event 29, the girls' 200-meter dash. We want to remind you that we have an app that you can use every day to check the scores. Just download it to your phone. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all area scores with the WOSN Scores app. Download the free app from Android or Apple stores or visit WOSN.TV. All right, here we go. It's heat three of three in the girls' 200-meter dash. Here's who we have in lane one. It's Regan Marshall of Continental. Lane two, Allison Thompson of Columbus Grove. Lane three, Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove. Lane four, Lauren Loddick of Kaleida. Lane five, Jalen Seifer of Lipsick. And lane six, Jessa Burgai of Ottoville. And some fam familiar names. Once again, Lauren Ockmoody comes in with the best seed time, 26.27, but we've already seen Lauren Laudick break a PCL record here tonight. She'll be in lane four, so it should be a battle between three and four, and that's what it looks like here as Lauren Ockmoody may have the early lead here. Oh, but it's but gonna be a battle. Look at the straightaway here at the end. You can just see it on their faces. She's still got the lead. But can she hold off Lodic? And she does. Ock Moody with the wind. Win, rather. No wind, really. <laughs> no Moody wind. with the win. And Lodic from Kaleida is second. Event 30, the boys 200 meter dash. Heat two of two. In lane one, Boat Thompson, Columbus Grove. Two, Marquise Williams, Lipsick. Lane three, Grant Eversole, Columbus Grove. Lane four, Jackson Schrader, Kaleida. Lane five, Peyton Wilson, Continental. And lane six, Logan Kester of Ottoville. A good start there by Jackson Schrader from Kaleida. As he's out yeah, in he, first. He really came around that curve foul, but look at Peyton, Peyton, Peyton Wilson, Wilson and, and Grant Eversole. Grant Eversole. Yep. Uh, oh. We had a runner fall down there at the end. So I almost saw Peyton Wilson dive toward the end. Uh, from our standpoint, we couldn't really see whether that was Eversole or Wilson who won. And uh, Wilson now getting helped up. Oh, I hope he's all right. Time now for event 31, the girls' 3,200 meter run. You're watching the Putnam County League Championship Meet. Our title sponsor is Sprunger Insurance, with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. 
Go Rockets. Here are our runners in the girls' 3200 meter run. Savannah Canuvin, Pandora Goboa, Morgan Schunk, Continental, Andrea Fowle of Miller City, Andrea Burgai of Kaleida, Erica Colley of Kaleida, Sarah Kampfhaus of Columbus Grove, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, and Avery Traxler of Pandora Gilboa. Josiah did want to mention also in the last race, we saw Peyton Wilson of Continental almost do a nosedive at the uh, finish line. We just want to report he was able to get up, walk off the track. Um, he did have the trainer around him, but he was able to do so um, unaided. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. As we look at our race so far, uh, Andrea Fowl from Miller City. Uh, winner of our 1600 meter run. So she's out in front, comes with the best seat time. And that seat time is 11 minutes, 49 seconds. So she comes into this race with the top seat time by uh, about 40 seconds over Columbus Grove's Sarah Camphouse with a 12.29. That'd be a right 31. Yeah, about, about that much. And she's already got a pretty sizable lead as we take off. Columbus Grove, Kaleida, that's your second and third place runners as of this moment. Want to read some results to us as we watch this race? Yeah, let's look at the boys' 4 by 800 meter relay. In fifth place was Lipsick. In fourth place was Kaleida. In third place was Ottaville. In second place, Pandora Gilboa. And our winning team was Columbus Grove with Logan Mershman, Evan Pitts, Braylon Best, and Bryce Boniface with a time of 8 minutes 37 seconds. That feels so long ago, the 4 by it 8. It does. That was back when it was raining. I mean, the weather is actually very, very pleasant it's now. It's beautiful out right now. Sun's peeking through the clouds and nice cool weather, especially for this 3,200 meter run. Uh, looking at a couple more results in the girls' 100 meter hurdles. In fifth place, Carly Heitmeyer from Kaleida. In fourth place, Kendall Palti from Columbus Grove. In third place, Jessa Burgai from Ottaville. In second place, Bree Clausen from Columbus Grove. And our winner from Lipsick, Morgan Apple, with a time of 15.4. For the boys' 110 meter hurdles. In fifth place, Ezra Webkin from Fort Jennings. In fourth place, Jonathan Etter from Continental. In third place, Braylon Berentes from Columbus Grove. In second place, Leighton Blankenmeyer from Columbus Grove. And winning the boys' 110-meter hurdles is Garrett Trentman from Ottaville with a time of 15.11. All right, before Josiah continues, just want to update you. Same leader, actually pretty much the same combination. We still got Columbus Grove in second and Kaleida in third. Columbus Grove runner is making a move right now, so we got a second Grove runner now in the fourth spot. As we look at the girls' 100-meter dash results, in fifth place, Lara Parkins from Pandora Gilboa, Avery Unverfirth from Kaleida in fourth, in third place, Morgan Apple from Lipsick, in second place, Meredith Bockrath from Kaleida, and our winner of the girls' 100-meter dash, Allison Thompson from Columbus Grove with a time of 12.98. In the boys' 100-meter dash, in fifth place, Peyton Wilson, from Continental. In fourth place, Grant Fortman from Kaleida. Michael Turnwald finishes third from Ottaville. It Ryan Verhoff from Kaleida is in second. And Keegan Bame from Columbus Grove with a time of 11.49. The winner of our boys' 100 meter dash. We said that name a few times tonight, haven't we? Keegan Bame. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll do a little bit of everything. You know, it was in the four by one, four by two. You know, started off, I think, for every single one of those races off the block. So it does a great job, a great runner for Columbus Grove. Andrea Powell is making her way around here. She has five more laps to go. No change in your leaders at this moment. Miller City still first, Columbus Grove second. Kaleida just tucked behind in third. As we look at the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay, some results. In sixth place was Fort Jennings. In fifth place was Lipsick. Fourth place, Ottaville. Third place, Pandora Gilboa. In second place, Kaleida. And our winning team, the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay, was Columbus Grove with Allison Thompson, Devaney Pingle, Bree Clausen, and Jade Roeder with a time of 1 minute 49 seconds. And we look at the boys' 4 by 2 meter relay. In sixth place is Fort Jennings. In fifth place is Lipsick. In fourth place is Continental. In third place was Kaleida. 
Second place was Ottaville. And in first place, winning the boys 4 by 200 meter relay was Columbus Grove with the team of Keegan Bain, Trenton Barraza, Leighton Blankenmeyer, and Grant Eversall with a time of 1 minute 33 seconds. All right, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back with just about a lap and a half left to go in this race. Your current leader is Andrea Fowle from Miller City. She is now lapping people. That is uh, shows her strength. This is a tough race overall for anybody, so I give great credit to anybody who runs this race. But Andrea, she looks strong. She looks focused. And we'll be back in just a moment to finish up the girls' 3,200-meter run. And we are back. Andrea Fowle from Miller City is still in the lead of the girls' 3,200 meter run. She gets just less than one and a half laps in this race. She, she doesn't appear to me that she has slowed down at all. No, and she's extended that lead about 300 meters now as she continues to push, as she laps about a, her teammate coming up here around this corner. But, you know, just doing a great job striding out. As you said, hasn't slowed down, continues to just push herself as she's going to be coming to her final lap here. About 500 meters to go for her, and she's just run an amazing race so far. That's right. Now, what you don't see going on is the race for second, third, and fourth. When we left you, Sarah Camphouse and Andrea Burgai were in that second and third battle. But since that time, we've had another runner, I believe, make her way you know what, actually, I think before I say that, I think Pandora Gilboa Runner has moved up, but there's been so many lappings going on at this time that sometimes it can be difficult to exactly know where everybody is. Yeah, absolutely, but it does look like it is Pandora Gilboa in second, Kaleida in third, and Columbus Grove in fourth. Like you said, sometimes it's hard to determine, but it seems like Savannah Neven from Pandora Gilboa is in second place. Tells you a lot about the 3200, how a lot of things can happen in those eight laps. Well, it's less than less than a lap. It's almost just half a lap for Andrea Fowle from Miller City. As she undoubtedly is going to be our PCL League champion in the 3200, which is going to be the question of what's her time going to be? Because I, I actually think she's sped up here in this last yeah. lap. <laughs> yeah, no slowing down for her. And look at that. It looks like she's now almost sprinting. This last 150, as she's just got more in the tank. <laughs> it's impressive to see how she's been able to start her pace from the beginning and keep it going, virtually running this entire race by herself. Claps from all areas as she pushes her way into the finish line. All right, we're going to stick around here so that we can see who finishes in second place, almost 300. 300 meters behind. Absolutely. It'll be interesting for Andrea Fowle. The league record was 11 minutes, 29 seconds. You know, the way she was moving, it'll be curious to see how close she was to that record. All right, we're starting to see some of these ladies pick things up here on the back straightaway as they, too, are getting ready for their final 200 of these this 3,200-meter run. Uh, really interesting just to see how Pandora Gilboa, uh, how that runner ran her race. She wasn't up there in second place for the good first half of that race, but she must have had a, a plan on when she was going to do things. Yeah, just been consistent, and we see her now starting to kick to finish, and it's going to be a battle between three and four now as the Collider runner has passed the Columbus Grove runner. We'll see who's got something left for this last 50. Oh, people are really cheering here. It's fun to see the excitement for this race. Pandora Gilboa second, Kaleida third, and Columbus Grove fourth. Just one more individual race. It's your boys' 3,200-meter run, and after this, it's the 4x400-meter relays. We want to remind you that our presenting sponsor of the PCL Track Championships is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. In Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's, call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Well, if you've had a runner that's already been in a race that's happened, we have a lot of results to uh, bring to you, and Josiah is going to bring those to you as the 3200 gets kicked off. But first, let's check out and see who will be running. In lane one,
Colin Heitmeyer of Kaleida, Jack Buell of Pandora Gaboa, David Garcia of Lipsick, Cameron Bergai of Continental. In lane two, Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove, who is the record holder in this event, last year running a 924-74. Also in this lane, Calvin Miller of Miller City, Adam Buell of Pandora Gaboa, and Liam Druckmiller of Ottoville. And in lane three, Evan Pitts of Columbus Grove, Mason German of Fort Jennings, Riley Kemper of Ottoville, and Alex Schinninger of Kaleida. Eight laps around the track. Josiah, the, it's a little bit cooler, no rain. The rain is gone, so that's nice. The sun is out, but temperatures have dropped just a tad bit here. Yeah, well, these runners love this temperature. You are right. <laughs> the perfect temperature for you know, not too hot. The wind's not blowing at all. So these runners get it, can get out and just do what they love to do, which is run. That's right. Isn't something I'd say I enjoy doing, so. <laughs> you know, distance runners are a special or group of people. And uh, I did run cross country. I didn't run distance and track. I ran middle distance, but um, you definitely have a unique group of individuals who run races like this. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It, it, it's a good thing because of their focus and their dedication. Well, and I've also found with these distance runners, they like to run in any weather. They just like to go out and run. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I can tell you a story about running in an Iowa blizzard <laughs> with two of my teammates when we could not see anything. Uh, when we got back from our run, I think our eyes were caked in white <laughs> snowflakes. Yep. And um, but it was great. You know, 35 years later, we still talk about it. All right, take a look at what's going on right here. And what we have is Luke Ellerbrock is not in the lead. I don't know if that's by design or not. His teammate is in the lead. Evan Pitts comes in with a 9.55 seed time, and Luke comes in with a 9.44.7. Well, and you imagine they run against each other every day in <laughs> practice so probably used to this and challenging each other and i'm sure you know this is going to just be a race between them two to see how well they can do tonight in this great putnam county league championship absolutely going to be a bigger race not really a bigger race the whole thing is a big race but taking back you can't see them right now but the group that is vying for third place is still rather close there's four guys that are just look like they're um they're running as a team. It's almost synchronized running there, but I'm sure that's going to change in a few laps to go. All right, Josiah, you've got some results to bring us. Yeah, let's look at the girls' 1,600-meter run in fifth place, Savannah Kneven from Pandora Gabilla. In fourth place, Sarah Compass from Columbus Grove. In third place, Addie Miller from Kaleida. Her teammate, Andrea Bergai, finishes in second. And the winner, Andrea Fowl from Miller City, with a time of five minutes, 23 seconds. In the girls' pole vault, so looking at a couple field events here. In fifth place was Carly Webkin from Kaleida. In fourth place, Emma McCall from Pandora Gilboa. Seal Wise from Pandora Gilboa finishes in third. Maya Verhoff from Columbus Grove it comes in second. And the winner, Lauren Ockmoody with a jump of 11 feet. So congratulations to Lauren Ockmoody and the winner of the girls' pole vault. In the boys' 1600 meter, which good to our winner, which is also in this race. In fifth place, Wyatt German from Ottaville. In fourth place, Colin Heitmeyer from Kaleida. Levi Bryan from Columbus Grove finishes third. Calvin Miller from Miller City is in second. And Luke Ellerbrock wins it with a time of four minutes, 22 seconds. And I think he was just off that record by about a second. So close. And the girls' four by one. In sixth place was Fort Jennings. In fifth place was Ottaville. In fourth place was Lipsick. Third place was Pandora Gilboa. In second place was Kaleida. And winning the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay was the team of Columbus Grove, was Allison Thompson, Bryn Hawker, Amaya Huff, and Jade Roeder with a time of 52 seconds. All right, just going to cut in quickly to update what's going on here. Our leader remains Evan Pitts from Columbus Grove in first place. His teammate Luke Ellerbrock is currently in second place. It's a battle for third with Miller City taking over the lead just now for that third place spot. Kaleida working on it and Ottaville. So you've got Miller City third, Kaleida fourth, Ottaville fifth. By the looks of that group, that could change at any moment. Yeah, and the results for the boys' 4 by one meter relay in fifth place was Continental. In fourth place was Kaleida. In third place, Pandora Gilboa. 
in second place, Audeville. And our winners for the boys' 4x1-meter relay, Columbus Grove with the team of Keegan Bain, Grant Eversall, Trenton Barraza, and Trevin Baxter with the time of 44.56. So great run there by the Columbus Grove boys. In the girls' 400-meter dash, in fifth place, Josie Otto from Miller City. Nicole Siebenet comes in fourth. Lauren Ockmoody comes in third place for Columbus Grove. Jade Roeder comes in second place from Columbus Grove. And our winner was Lauren Laudick with a time of 59.78. Congratulations to Lauren Laudick. Four laps to go in this race. Columbus Grove still has your first and second place runners. That race for third place continues right now. Miller City is in first, uh, for not really first, I'm sorry, first in the group. Miller City's in third, Kaleida is in fourth, and Ottaville is in fifth. As we look at a few more results here in the boys' 400 meter dash. In fifth place, Chase Meyer from Pandora Gilboa. Jared Holland comes in fourth from Columbus Grove. Colin Davis finishes third from Continental. His teammate, Grant Clements, finishes second. And winning, Trenton Barraza from Columbus Grove, the boys' 400-meter dash with a time of 51.94. And as we look at the boys' 300-meter hurdles, and it looks like we have a new meet record. New meet record, all right. And we'll get to that here in fifth place. Carter Benton from Lipsick. In fourth place, Joseph Lease from Ottaville. In third place, Brock Schaefer from Columbus Grove. In second place, Leighton Blinkenmeyer from Columbus Grove. And our new meet record was completed by Garrett Trentman from Ottaville with a time of 39.47. Wow. 39.47. It's really been fun to watch him. Uh, I mean, all of the runners, but watching him because he's been very smooth over those hurdles really has a good technique. Yeah, absolutely. For our girls' 300-meter hurdles, in fifth place was Mackenzie Schock from Continental. Mallory Kerner from Kaleida finishes fourth. Morgan Apple from Lipsick finishes third. And second, Jessa Burgai from Ottaville. And our winner of the girls' 300-meter hurdles was Kendall Palti from Columbus Grove with a time of 48.41. We are getting down there. Just three laps to go. Actually, less than three laps for our leaders. And our leaders still remain the same. We still have Evan Pitts from Columbus Grove in first place and Luke Ellerbrock from Columbus Grove in second place, Miller City is currently in third, and Kaleida just behind him in fourth. As we look at the boys' 300-meter hurdles, in fifth place was Carter Benton from Lipsick. In fourth place, Joseph Lice from Ottaville. In third place, Brock Schaefer from Columbus Grove. His teammate, Leighton Blinkenmeyer, finishes in second. And once again, Garrett Tretman from Ottaville with a time of 39.47. And we got a field event here, a girl shot put. In fifth place, Devin Draper from Pandora Gilboa. In fourth place, Lexi Huntingford from Ottaville. Kendall Ellerbrock from Ottaville finishes third. Malia Romas from Kaleida finishes second. And Mia Burgai from Kaleida. So big one-two finish in the girl shot put for Kaleida with a throw of 34 feet 10 inches. And as you mentioned that, now this is after 13 events scored, so this isn't necessarily where we are. At that point, Kaleida was winning. Uh, was like you said, those double whammies, in a sense, yeah. first and second place, really does do a lot for the scoring. Yeah, if you can get two athletes to score points for you, it really adds up in the end. The girls' 1,800-meter results, Savannah Kneven from Pandora Gavoa finishes fifth. Grace Mormon finishes fourth from Columbus Grove. Addie Miller from Kaleida is in third. Devaney Pingle from Columbus Grove finishes second, and Ali Kuhlman from Kaleida with a time of two minutes and 26 seconds wins the girls' 800-meter run. And once again, I want to just bring up the results after 14 events scored. Kaleida remains in the lead in the girls, 147 points over Columbus Grove's 135.5. And here we go in the final lap and take a look at what just happened. Luke Ellerbrock who was trailing for the entire race, which truthfully was surprising me. I knew there had to be something up Luke's sleeve. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe he was just tired from his 1600. <laughs> no, Luke was just waiting for the last 
400. And here he goes, Luke doing Luke things. Well, a little different strategy for this race, as we saw on the, the mile. You know, he was out in front the entire time. This time decided to just run with his teammate right behind him. But as you said, once he heard that bell, he just took off sprinting. And here he goes now, about a 15-meter lead over his teammate. And it doesn't look like he's going to slow down at all. I, I honestly was wondering what was happening because I'm not used to seeing Luke behind like that. And I, I didn't know if he was just being kind and letting <laughs> his teammate do it. I didn't know. I mean, his teammate's running quite well. But here we go. Luke Ellerbrock pushing his way in. The senior from Columbus Grove, your record holder in this race, is going to graduate yeah, as the PCL champion in the 3200. His teammate will come in second place. And let's hold on and see what happens for third place. Still about 200 to go. We've got the Miller City Runner. I believe the Miller City Runner. Let's watch and see where we are here. This is what happens in a race when you've got 300 meters between your first and your third place runner. Yeah, absolutely. I believe it's Kaleida. I believe it's Kaleida. Okay, thanks for the correction. Of course, that's kind of what we saw happening as well was Kaleida was just tucked behind Miller City for quite a while, and then he too had his point when he was going to make his way, move his way into that third place finish with the Miller City runner with a ton of energy here to make his finish to finish in fourth. Well, this is it, folks. We've made it to the final two races, the 4 by 400 meter relay for both the girls and the guys. Have you appreciated this uh, track meet? Do you appreciate the coverage that WSN provides to high schools all throughout the region? Perhaps you'd be willing to make a donation to our Spring to Life funding campaign. Help us raise up to $75,000, actually hopefully over $75,000 by Mother's Day. We're currently at seventy. dollars $2,400. All you have to do is go to axministries.com and you can donate online or you can give us a call during the week at 419-339-4444 or even stop in at 1844 Beatty Road. We say thank you in advance for your donation of any size. 100% of your donation stays local and is used for local programming. All right, time now for event 33, the girls 4x400 four meter relay. In lane 2, Ottoville, Lane 3, Columbus Grove, Lane 4, Kaleida, Lane 5, Pandora Gilboa, and Lane 6, Fort Jennings. Ottoville leading off with Myla Kemper in 2, Columbus Grove with Jade Raider in 3, Kaleida's Ali Coleman in 4, Pandora Gilboa leading off with Lauren Teeters in 5, and Fort Jennings, Grace Welch in 6, and Josiah, you noticed Fort Jennings uh, all freshmen, so they are definitely a young team learning and building. As we see here is the two best seed times coming in, Columbus Grove with a time of 4 minutes 14 seconds. Collided with a time of 4 minutes 19 seconds, so, you know, as you said earlier, the point spread isn't that much, so it could come down to this final race, so we'll see which team can come out on top and get the big points for their team. That's right. As we were reading off these results, we were recognizing that after 13 events scored in the girls, Kaleida was in the lead. They had taken the lead. And here we are after 16 events scored with the 3200. They still are in the lead, but it is close. Kaleida with 165, Columbus Grove with 157.5. So Columbus Grove, they want to win this. <laughs> Absolutely. This could be big points for them if they can come away with 10 points. But, you know, if Kaleida does come in second as we're oh, currently standing. That's right. You know, that would be eight yeah. points, only a two-point gain. So we'll see if, who can come out on top here. But as we've said all night, it's between Columbus Grove and Kaleida for the Putnam County League Championship. That Grove runner working hard to hold off Kaleida. Of course, Kaleida would just like to, if they can win this, then that would be what they need to solidify everything. If they get second place, like you also said, Josiah could also pull them in there. Columbus Grove, as you mentioned, comes in with a five second faster seed time. 
So we've got Grove one, Kaleida two, Ottoville currently in third place. Yeah, it looks like Grove has continued about 10 meter lead on Kaleida up front. And back to third place has about a 10 meter lead on Pandora Gilboa. But not really any more separation from the handoff here. We'll see if they have anything left at the end. This is the 400 meters, so one lap. So that last 100 meters is tough. But it looks like Columbus Grove has extended that lead a little bit as they hand off to their anchor. I want to give a quick shout out. She's not in your screen right now, but Angelina Gilbert from Fort Jennings. She's got the baton right now for her team. We watched her run the uh, the 3200, I believe, or the 800? The 800. The 800. She, flew, she ran the 800, and then moments later, she ran the 200, <laughs> yeah. and here she is now running the 400. You know, she may not be in the leader saying she – the team, their team isn't last right now, but her, her willingness to keep going yep. is really, really great. Also going, man, look at the keeping going of Columbus Grove. They are on a mission, and they're not going to – they do not want Collider to catch up. Nope. And as we look at them coming around the last 100 here, it's a good 40 to 50 meter lead, and it will be Columbus Grove who will win – the girls four by four. So Columbus Grove finishes first in the four by four and Kaleida finishes second. And now for the final event in the Putnam County League Championship meet hosted by Columbus Grove. It's the boys, four by 400 meter relay. In lane one, Lipsick. Lane two, Continental. Lane three, Columbus Grove. Lane four, Pandora Gilboa. Lane five, Ottoville. And lane six, Kaleida. Leading into this, we have Columbus Grove leading the boys. Ottoville in second. Not close, though, is it? Not even close. No. Columbus Grove coming into this event have 184.5 points. And second place is Ottaville with 88. So the results of this won't matter, but it will matter to the coaches. And of all times matter, splits matter. And we're looking at a PCL record of 325.40 set back in 2003. Columbus Grove comes in with a seed time of 333.6. I feel like the official was really waiting for a <laughs> while to make sure everybody was set there. Results. Here's your leadoff runners for each of the teams. Carter Benton for Lipsick in one. Grant Clements in content from Continental in two. Logan Mershman from Columbus Grove in three. Chase Meyer from Pandora Gilboa in four. Alex Lease of Ottoville in five. And Noah Wrecker of Kaleida in lane six. And it does look like Columbus Grove is out in the lead here in this first 400, coming to the last 100. As we see all the their teammates out on the inside of the track cheering them on, but it's a battle all the way around. That's right. They're close. Alex Lease of Ottoville, that's a name we've mentioned a few times tonight. He's got his team going out well, but that looks like it may have been Grant Clements from Continental that got his team started first. Columbus Grove going. They've got Zane Steckschulde listed, but that is not Zane. I did hear that Zane has been injured this season, certainly hoping that he can get better soon. But that runner right there for Grove is getting the job done. There's Trent Barraza. Once again, is out there, like I said, on our list. Looks like he was the fourth runner, but maybe with the injury, they shifted 
him to second. Actually, no, we've got Zane out there now. I see Zane getting ready to go with his pink shoes hopping around. So they just made some moves around with, I believe I think that's Zane anyway from my vantage point. And I'm going to go moving in, moving hard, moving fast. Continental in second place. Pandora Gilboa has moved into third place spot. And there goes Columbus Grove off and running. So the lineup that we have listed here for Grove, Logan Mershman, Zane Steckscholdy, Leighton Blankmeyer, and Trenton Barraza. As we've seen before, coaches can move things around. Yep. Uh, they can make those changes. Columbus Grove still in first. Continental comes in with a 345 seed time. They don't come in second. They come in third, but they are holding on to that second place spot. Pandora Gilboa, your current third place in, in this race. As we see that Continental runner coming up on the corner has cut that lead to a, oh, about one or two meters, but it looks like he's trying to take the lead. It's going to be close to the handoff. That's right. We've got Malik James written down here as the person who is that runner and then handing off to Colin Davis. Of course, Trenton Barrazos, who was listed as our anchor here. That is not Trenton. I'm going to guess maybe Leighton Blankemeyer. Just someone fast, yes. that's all I'll say. It's just a fast guy making his way down the straightaway. Uh, looks like it's going to be a battle here. There's about a five-meter distance between them, but it looks like the Continental runner wants to maybe pass going into the turn. Yeah, well, he's tucking in right here. He, he was really close, but he's tucking in. He knows what he's supposed to do and when he's supposed to do it. He's moved out just a tiny bit so he doesn't get boxed in. And here, here it goes, guys. It's down to the straightaway. Take a look at that Columbus Grove runner. Just put his chest out. Now his head is down, pushing his way to the end. And he will bring it home for Columbus Grove. What an exciting race that was to finish. <laughs> A great win by Columbus Grove at the end, but it was Continental that gave them all they could handle and pushed them to the very end. So Columbus Grove won, Continental two. And that was going to wrap it up for us. Here's how things ended in the girls' side. Kaleida is your champion, and Columbus Grove girls come in second. On the boys' side, Columbus Grove, the home team, gets the first place finish for the boys, and Ottoville finishes in second. I want to say thank you for joining us for the Putnam County League Championship meet here at Columbus Grove. For Josiah Stober, Jacob O'Neill, and our operations manager, Nick Fraley, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this great track meet on WOSN.